I blame uh, my dad because it's probably it's, damn it's, again. It's, it, it's probably my fucking dad coming home and like sucking up all the fucking internet. Anyway, even the internet, the gold is sucked, dude. Damn. Kelly has multiple tabs, like somebody we know. Looking oh at my you, God. my dude. What is he doing? Spirit Otter said. Yeah. Well, and he... then relax, my dude said, leave me alone, Tifa. <laughs> nope. I don't know, my she dad. Needs them. I swear to God, it's probably my dad starting to binge watch some crap. He's watching Squid Game. He's watching every episode of Squid Game all at once. That's what's happening. <laughs> Consecutively. <laughs> every tab is an episode. That or, the, the, same or the combined thing of my dad watching whatever shit he's watching on the computer and then my mom being on the fucking Spectrum Wi-Fi. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's like once a night, the internet will just fucking die out of nowhere. Oh, relax, my dude said. Tifa, I'll get closer to the mic, by the way. Bleach your tabs and I'll consider it. <laughs> Damn, dude. I have a I fucking arguing in my chat. I got a fucking tabs command on my stream. Oh well, yeah, thanks for reminding me. Are you starting your stream up again? Are you yeah, it, it started up again. Let me go get my drinks from the kitchen really quickly, and I'll, I'll jump back in in a moment. Sounds good. I'll let you get settled again. <laughs> oh my god. Both of the fucking commands. Yep. There you go, you get ice cream. I like ice cream. Me too. On Rocky Road. Yeah. I just realized it's been a long ass time since I've had Rocky Road ice cream. So the owner hasn't made any more Rockley Road in a while. He doesn't like making chocolate ice cream because the powder gets messy. <laughs> Oh, that's the point of ice cream. Oh, I'm just saying, he doesn't like to make it. Oh, I guess I know where I'm not taking my money. Not that I don't know how to get there yet. I almost dropped one dude. How dare you? The audacity. Wait, what happened? Then you almost dropped one, so he said the audacity. Yeah, I almost dropped my drink, dude. Put it in the fridge right now. That one's for later, this one's for now, dude. Nah, it's a tea, dude. I bought it. Didn't you hear me say I'm gonna buy tea? <laughs> Damn, dude, don't even listen to me, dude. Damn. Oh yeah, my it's, god, it's I had 70. some kid ask me for some, wait, for those suits, guys, from Squid Game as a balloon. And I was kind of shocked because the kid was like 10. He should not be watching that, lol, said Spirit Otter. <laughs> I've never seen it, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I I don't think I can watch it as much as I would like to. I would say it would be really cool to watch it, but it's just doesn't sound like something I need to watch right now. All I know is that there's the, the game where you walk. Uh what is it? Uh red light, blue light. There you go. There you go. I know that they have um the thing where like where you have to like poke the shape out of I know about the doctor. That's all I know about. <laughs> I don't know. Someone's sending you to I Florida again. Know. Do you really want to be in Florida again? No. Hell no. No one wants to go to Florida, dude. Oh, speaking of weird shit in countries, I mean, in other states, did you know that in Texas it is illegal to own more than six um, vibrators? No. <laughs> in Texas, you can legally own more firearms than vibrators. Because the the last one is dangerous, dude. I can. <laughs> and they're straight up. And there's a law on the books that they're straight up illegal to have in Alabama. And if you get one, you have to sign a thing saying that it's for medical use. Damn, dude, but they don't have that for the family? What the fuck? <laughs> right? Sweet yeah, home Alabama. 
<laughs> so anyway, right, fuck so, the south. So where were we? <laughs> um. Uh, big evidence. Now we got new this shit. Is oh shit, dude. This is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. This is wonderful. Thank you. Giselle's report has been entered into the court record. Goodbye, then, and good luck. Bye, Maya. <laughs> Goodbye, Ma not oh, Maya. No. My opinion is she's a lot cooler than Maya. Leave Maya alone. No. Shit. <clears throat> You've had had long enough, counsel. We cannot detain our English guest any longer. British ellipses. I ask the prosecution and the defense now one last time. Does either side have any further evidence to present the court? I presume not, but... The prosecution has made its case convincingly enough already. Nothing more to add, Your Excellency. Inosuke, we're out of options here. This really is our very last chance. Yeah, I know. Your Excellency, the defense does have new evidence. Hmm. That look. The unyielding stare of a true Japanese warrior. Fuck yeah. Well, Miss Brett? Yes, Your Excellency. If you wouldn't mind, perhaps you can grace us with your presence a little longer. It's a delightful invitation, but I'm afraid... It's not so very long until tea time. Not to politely decline. Forgive me, Miss Brett. It seems I wasn't clear. I realize it was phased as a question. However, I must ask you to treat this as an order. What happened to my voice, dude? British ellipses. <laughs> I've said it many times before, but the Japanese language makes no sense. My apologies, dear lady. So, counsel. What is this new evidence that demands the court's attention? Okay, so do we want to examine this you thing can read first? It first? Yeah. Oh, shit, dude. Um, Look in a book. Poison made from the bark rainbow. of certain trees in the jungles of South America. Instant paralysis of the entire body and subsequent death, even in minute doses. The above mentioned effects occur when the poison enters the body through a wound. Um, due to its ability to render the human body paralytic, it's believed the toxin could have application of its anesthetic. Solution for the respiratory arrest causes a result of both body paralysis must be found first, or patients would die of suffocation. Oh shit, dude! You couldn't breathe, dude! Yeah, the funny part is, it said it entered through a wound. We're all wounded emotionally, so I get it. Bruh. <laughs> oh, hi, Spirit Otter. Nice to see you over okay, on, our, on my side. Does this really have to get dark that fast? So we're presenting. It's already we're dark, dude. We already we, know what happens here. We have yeah. just saved it for November 7th when it hits 5 o'clock dark time, please. What does that even mean? What? what? Like saving. What? Daylight saving. November 7th. 5 o'clock dark time. Bruh. Wait, is that hour ahead or for or back? Back. Backwards. Aw, oh, shit, dude. Back. I don't want to be tired again, dude. Please. All back. Why do we... Thank you. It's a pro I controller thought that I already wanted. happened. No, it happens... It if happens We spring Sunday. forward and then we fall back. Yeah, but we fall back and fall. This is our... It's winter, dude. Dude, winter's not Holy till December. Thing. Bruh. Yeah. I thought no, winter was November, dude. Nah. No. Winter is December, January, and February. Yee. No, dude. We're still in autumn. And it's not even cold yet. No wonder. Fuck, dude. Damn mm -hmm. it. In the daylight savings already. We're currently in daylight savings time. It ends on Sunday. Yep. Where everyone but me gets an extra hour of sleep. I don't get an extra hour of sleep. Hey, dude. Oh, I don't. Why? Why don't you? Huh? Because I work. I might be streaming. That's your fault. <laughs> That's your fault too. Well, yeah, it's my fault that I got a job because I need to make money. Exactly, because you choose to go to the job. 
You could take the day off. Call in sick. <laughs> no, I can't. Exactly. I'll, I'll come. I'll, I'll come pick you up, my dude. <laughs> Hey, so if we choices, choices. In Arizona, if I live in Arizona. There's no such thing as daylight over there. Yeah, I wish. I wish the rest of the I don't country even know was what like that Arizona. Is. It's literally what I just said. We are about daylight saving. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what that state is. <laughs> Arizona. Arizona. <laughs> Where exactly. the Grand Canyon is. One? Huh? Isn't it just a hole in the ground? Oh, Never mind. Your brain. Bruh. Bruh. Really? <laughs> oh, Ryan. I'm just pressing on. I'm pressing on. I'm just fucking presenting this shit. Ye yes. Yes. <clears throat> Miss Giselle, Brad. We understand you were studying under Dr. Wilson at Yume University doing research. Hmm? British ellipses. Research by sheer coincidence, perhaps, into deadly poison. What poison? Poison. Where are you going with this council? Toxin known as Cure, Your Excellency. Even the slightest amount of this deadly poison entering the body leads to instant death. Objection. Objection. What? What complete and utter nonsense! C cure rare, you say? I've never even heard of it. You wouldn't have done. What? <laughs> what do you oh. mean? What? The, that wasn't even. Huh? In, that wasn't English or Japanese. I mean that you wouldn't have heard of cure rare before, or one very for one very simple reason. It doesn't exist in our country doesn't exist. Correct. Which means, no matter what test the police can do for toxins, they never identify Kirar. Why? Because there is no test available here that can identify the presence of this highly deadly poison. Order, order, order. Council, does this deadly poison truly exist? According to this report authored by the visiting research student from England, Ferrer has been long has long been used by the tribes people of South America as a poison to lace their arrows. It seems that it's reasonably well known among European doctors and scientists. To to lace their arrows. The report states that it is produced from the extract of a tree that grows deep in the Amazonian jungle. And it was first brought back to Europe at the turn of the century by explorers. I love I love Rionske just going through all the papers in the background. Right. We shuffle in claims that animals shot by arrows laced with cure air suffer instant death. It's not about sum it up, Miss Brett. British ellipses. Objection! Objection? Trumpery! These aspirations uh. are utter trumpery! Like a some you sort of fake pres news? This is <laughs> fake news! We need to build a wall around Japan! Oh god. <laughs> I guess if I was, she was the, the one to say it, it would make sense, right? Sexist and racist? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> to start with, if the victim had been administered for some of this so-called deadly poison, he would have been squirming and writhing in pain, and other diners would have surely noticed. <laughs> hmm. That's true. What do you say to that, Inspector? Hmm. Obviously, I would have noticed a disturbance like that. Hmm. I don't remember anything like that either. I didn't notice Professor being in any kind of pain. 
According to this, however, it's the other way around. What do you mean, the other way around? The very fact that the victim didn't show any visible signs of distress is evidence that cure air was used. Explain yourself, Counsel. The moment this toxin, this toxin enters a person's system, it causes instant paralysis. In other words, afflicted victims lose all strength and are completely unable to move. Even if they were in, a, in total agony, one of my favorite songs from Into the Woods, oh my there God. would be no visible signs of pain at all. Agony, misery, whoa! Oh, terrible. Obviously, if a man lost all strength in his muscles, he'd collapse on the floor. And with a chair under him for support, as Dr. Wilson did, effects could go largely unnoticed. But I don't follow, Kazuma. That's just paralysis. I thought the poison caused instant death. Mm. The full explanation is extremely unpleasant. Poison causes immediate paralysis, as I said, leaving the victim unable to move. Yeesh. After a short time, the process is so severe, it causes the muscles that control respiration to fail. Ugh. Respiration? In other words, the actual cause of death is suffocation. He choked! No breathing. And all the while, the victim is conscious and aware, just unable to move. Fuck. That's hideous. The observer would look almost like the victim was slipping peacefully into an endless sleep. For the victim himself, his final moments would be a living hell. Jesus. That is the true nature of this deadly cure air poison. Fuck. Holy shit, this man tall as fuck, dude. <laughs> I'm fast as fuck, that? boy. No, I never saw it from that angle. Okay. And you're suggesting that this bottle council actually contains this terrifying poison. Objection. This, this, this is all very convenient, isn't it? A hitherto unknown poison for which there is no means of testing? What a happy tale for the defense. Ahem. If I may. All these facts. You think you're so clever, but there must be some matters. Shut up. It is you who must be taught. Uh, uh, of course. Dear lady. British ellipses. I got curious if this career was a real thing or something made up. It actually is real, and it seems to work like it's stated in the game. Fuck. Wow. I, think, I think it's for... The reason why it's made like that is to keep the bodies of the animals that they that they uh, shoot down in better uh, pristine state, so they don't have to like you know. Um, how do you say it? So the the body doesn't go like bad because like there's, there's certain animals that like if you shoot in the wrong way, they they taste worse or something like that. I forget. Well, I can understand that. It's it's preservation. That's what it is. Well, then it's also like. You don't have to mutilate it as much, too. Exactly. So, this is how you Japanese behave, is it? What? You steal another's honest hard work and then announce the results as if you discovered them. I'm appalled. What a loathsome act. Well, Miss Brett, the feeling is mutual. Whatever do you mean? Capitalizing on the unfortunate circumstances of an innocent man to frame him for a heinous crime? That really is a loathsome act. Wouldn't you agree? Objection! Objection! Enough of this! I, for one, refuse to accept it! This is fake news! The idea of some poison that doesn't even exist in the Great Empire in Japan is, is breaking the rules! <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, excuse me, your excellency. Yes, Miss Brett. May I borrow that bottle for a moment, please? 
Um, well, yes, I don't see, um, why not? She's gonna fucking drink it, isn't she? Yep. Don't get too big for your boots, you insignificant little island boys. Sorry? To an Englishwoman such as myself, this whole affair is a farcical comedy. Your little police games and all these foolish courtroom antics. It's laughable, really. Mm. But I'm getting bored of it all now. It's time for the games to end. Cheers. Slurp. Wait. What, what are you doing? Hmm. No sparkle left at all. How appropriate for the shabby affair. Hmm. Bruh. I seem to have some medical uses, not as anesthetic, but as treatment for tetanus and something poisoning. Kind of interesting. I wonder if maybe they were thinking about using it for anesthesia at some point. But that's a good point. Thanks for the research, Spirit Otter. Goodness. Whatever is the matter, you all look quite stunned. So, no cure bottle was clean. That's what you're saying? <laughs> you look quite incredulous, little boy. But of course. That's the simple truth. Thank you for presenting the findings of my research so concisely here in this grand venue. Most kind. Thank you, waiter. Now then, your excellency. Mm. Ah. <clears throat> yes, Miss Brett. I should like to be excused now, please. I think I've given more than enough of my time. For the furtherance of friendship between our countries. Ah, yes, dear lady. We are most gratified with all the assistance you've given. <sighs> Does it make sense? Her had to have been poisoned in that bottle. Wow, how did she... We already know how. How did she swallow a whole glass and live to tell the tale? Because of that mouth. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> okay, that's 90 seconds. Go to the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. I don't understand it. Well, I suppose if nothing else, this little Far Eastern charade will make for interesting conversation at the next party I attend in London. There. There has to be poison in that bottle, doesn't there? But there can't have been, because otherwise she would have killed over dead. Come on, Reno, it's okay. We have all the clues now. A bottle of water. Oh shit, I misclicked! No, dude! Oh, you did right. You got it right. Wait, for it contains poison? It contains it. Okay. I still misclicked though, I didn't mean to. I meant to fucking... Ugh, fuck dude. Space bar, dude. The culprit did put... Okay. It did contain poison. The culprit did put Kurar poison into Dr. Wilson's carbonated water. I... I, the defense, refused to change its position. Or serious. Objection! Objection? Fool, are you blind? There's no possible way that bottle could contain poison. I mean, we just saw. Miss Strett drinking the water from it? That's right. Which rather complicates your arguments, I think. And I believe that complication can be explained. How, exactly? Hmm. I need to think through all the things that don't quite add up on... Here, one by one. 
I'm sure the answer's any evidence we have in the record somewhere. It has to be. Very well, and the defense is truly intends to assert this claim. <sighs> then I must ask you to support the assertion, assertion with the evidence. What explains how the witness was able to consume this supposedly poisoned water unscathed? Huh? In a report, obviously. Oh, I know why. Yep. Yuck, 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 yuck. You ready, Acacia? Do you? Me? I know. Wait, so is it the report? Yes, it is Giselle's report. Okay, yeet. Yes! Yes! The answer to this riddle is right here, in Ms. Brett's own research report. Objection! Objection. That's not a valid explanation. No? After all, we don't speak English. That report is utter gibberish. This impudent young scoundrel is trying to ridicule the court, Your Excellency. I'm not trying to ridicule anyone, honest. I'm just reading, reading Susanto Sound's notes. I concur, this report is too extensive to be considered in its entirety by the court. You will direct it to the pertinent section council. Which section of the report reveals the alleged answer to the riddle? Oh shit, I didn't actually look at the actual. Uh, it's under the practical applications. Yeah, it was like the last page. Oh. No? No, it's, um, hold on. I have to actually look at it. I know what it is, but hold on. Wait, I can look at the court record. Oh, okay, it's under. It'll be here. Yeah. Um, Special ha characteristics. Huh? Characteristics. Yeah. It's the pre oh because when it enters the body through a wound, but it wouldn't. Yeah. But it wouldn't if oh. you drank it, right? Mm-hmm. So. I thought he said no for some reason. I said yes. Okay, so. No, but it sounded like you said no. You went. It nope. did. It did sound like nope at first. I said nope to practical applications. Okay, so it's to special characteristics. Correct. All right. Okay. We've been hearing a lot about this curar poison. And it's left me curious about something. Oh, Council? Well, it sounds as though indigenous hunters have been using this poison for years and years. To lace the head of their arrows that they shot at the prey they were hunting. So we've been led to believe yes. And the point of hunting is to catch prey to eat. Get to the point, please. But if they were to use these laced arrows, doesn't that mean there would be traces of poison left in the prey the hunters are going to eat? Yes, good point. So surely the hunters wouldn't want to eat their prey. Would they? Because they'd be eating poison. Good gracious, Council. No, that would be madness. But I actually found the answer to the conundrum in this research paper here. Under special characteristics, it says this. The poison starts to work after entering the body through a wound. Through a wound, you say? I see, that makes sense. Yeah, the mention of this particular detail seemed a little strange to me, though. Hmm? British ellipses. But it all makes sense when you interpret what's written like this. When Kurar enters a body through an open wound, it has terrifying, po terrifying poison effects. However, when it enters the body via the mouth, it has no poison effects whatsoever. What? Miss Brett, you authored this research. You knew Kirar's special characteristics. And you knew that you could make a spectacle of drinking that water without any danger to yourself. You meddling little... What? Rapscallion! The, the fucking... The, the, it's alive? Yep. 
I mean, none of us. Are, I, I never said the bird was dead. Oh, I never did either. They said it no, couldn't. Y'all were talking about being taxidermied. I was joking. That was the arrow. <laughs> <laughs> why, why does she have a living swan on her head? Why not? Uh, why, why do fucking Beverly Hills chicks run around with little dogs in their purses, huh? The same difference. She's British. It's a swan. <laughs> Dude, she's <laughs> British. It's a swan. It makes less. It makes less fucking sense. What do you mean? That's their. That's their special animal, dude. They're supposed to be owned by the queen. Well, she's a queen, and she's slaying right now. Okay. I, I guess she is gatekeep girl <laughs> boss. Whatever. Gaslight gatekeep girl boss. That's what it is. <laughs> Victorian fashion got kind of out there. Fair enough. They did also eat mummies. Wait, what? Yeah. They did. Oh, they eat people? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I kill people and I eat hands. It's two things. Zell, that kills people. God damn it. Oh, Ryanosuke. It turns out... You're an even better lawyer than I thought you'd be. Really? Me? A lawyer? Objection! <laughs> Objection. Oh, all this poison talk is fascinating, I'm sure. But I fail to see how it possibly... Shut up. So, the ill breed little puppy has a new toy to play with. Some facts he read in a book. But I'm afraid knowledge doesn't suit you, little boy. It only makes you look silly. Coming from the lady with a swan on her head. Okay. <laughs> Mummy unwrapping what are you trying to say? Your schoolboyish logic has a fatal flaw. Schoolboyish? Flaw? Colonel! Even as your brain has managed to deduce, cure air is safe to ingest. It seems likely its effects are neutralized by the acidic nature of the gastric succus. Oh. <laughs> Rin, hi, nice to see you. Calm down, Piero. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is there supposed to be... A, how do you actually pronounce that? Mm -hmm. Okay, then. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, yes. Well, of course. Gastric suckers. What are they? <laughs> so... Oh, I guess it is suckers. <laughs> <laughs> see? I was right. Maybe. You are right. <laughs> so, if this lethal poison is completely harmless when drunk, the professor wouldn't have died when he swallowed it, would he? Ah. Uh. Curare is safe to ingest, and technically so is snake venom. What's your point, lady? Oh my god. That's right. Good gracious. That's basic science. Science that even a schoolboy should be able to understand. No? Tired of this fucking waffling, dude. <laughs> order, order in the court, order. The logic holds if the lady and the professor drank the same poison, they would be affected in the same way. Are, are you trying to suggest? Yes, this cure air poison is completely irrelevant to the case on trial. That's right. Surely even a little cockroach like you could understand something as simple as that. Look at me and my swan. She's molding, dude. Look at that black and white. <laughs> Zoom in. Why do they put her... <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps getting closer, dude. What the Extreme fuck? Extreme close up. <laughs> it's still coming closer. <laughs> oh, there okay. it goes. Okay, stop it. Stop. Okay, that, that's... <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Falling up inside of me. Bruh. I've never felt like this before. Bruh. <laughs> <clears throat> it's a sort of conviction to break down all discrepancies. It's so intense, almost rage like. And more than anything else, it's an animalistic desire to take down my prey, dude. What the oh hell? my god. <laughs> Why is, is it so like this? Freezing. <laughs> Freezing. Freezing. <laughs> Filthy minds. 
Hey, That's Spirit actually... Otter said it okay. too. Bill applies. His first <clears throat> objection. Objection? I don't think so, Miss Jezile Brett. Oh, how dare you use that tone with me? You know very well that there's no fatal flaw here. You know exactly why, even though both you and the victim swallowed the same poison. You're alive, but Dr. Wilson's dead. <gasps> British gasp. Counsel, I'm sure I don't need to remind you. You must provide compelling evidence. As well, as we know that the poison completely harmless when ingested. Why would Dr. Wilson alone have been killed by the curar? Uh, because you know, he know. he had dental work done. He had a wound in his mouth. Mm -hmm. So is it the report card? Yep. Take that! Oh, we did the take that! Let's go! Right. Take that! As Miss Brent so readily pointed out, she drank some of the water as the professor. However, there was a fundamental and fatal difference between the two diners. A fatal difference? Audible, audible British gasp. The toxic effects of QR are only felt when the poison enters the body through an open wound. So, for a healthy person with no injuries, drinking is completely harmless. But... What if there was a wound inside the mouth of the person drinking the poisoned water? Hmm? Inside? Yes. Like the wound you might have... I don't know. If you had just been to the dentist? And had a tooth extracted, for example? Ah. Uh uh. Miss Brett, you've acknowledged many times in your testimony already that you were well aware of Dr. Wilson's dental appointment that day. Ugh. So that's it. You use that knowledge to orchestrate this. British ellipses. Is she laughing? I don't like to repeat myself, but honestly, I can't resist. These childish courtroom games and your half-baked arguments are also puerile. What? What do you mean, puerile? Don't worry, little schoolboy. You'll find out soon enough. What? Oh, she yoinked it, dude. You see, Did you get this from my hand? Bruh. When you leave vital evidence lying around, you never know what might happen to it. No. I mean, it could just slip. Bruh. Oh dear, how careless of me. I'm afraid some crucial evidence may have just been tragically destroyed. <laughs> Is this no. not just her incriminating herself? What is it? What just happened? It's the English woman. She smashed the bottle. And the Supreme Court, what a terrible blunder. Officer, what are you waiting for? Collect up as much of the water that from that broken bottle as possible at once. You're wasting your time. This delightful carpet under my feet was a gift from the British Empire. I assure you, it will soak up the water beautifully. You have neither the technology nor the presence of mind to recover it. <laughs> I am a bitch. How could you? You you won't get away with this, you scumbag. You can thump. You know he wanted to say bitch. You're oh, right. I do too. You can thump the bench and shout as much as you like, little boy. But I'm afraid we'll never know now, will we? If there really was poison in the bottle, or not. And let us not forget, we still have some very compelling evidence left intact. Isn't that right, counsel for the prosecution? Oh, of course, of course! You're referring to this photographic print, I presume, dear lady. That's right, and really, looking at this photograph, every time I do it makes me laugh, it's clear as day, isn't it? The poor professor was sitting on with his back to me. So, of course, the only person who could have shot him from the front is Little Schoolboy. Objection! 
No, you killed the victim that day using pure air. Then, in order to frame Ryanosuke Naruto for the crime, you waited until he picked up the pistol you arranged for him to find on the floor before you shot the professor's dead body in the chest with your own hidden gun. And in the confusion that followed, all you had to do was turn the dead professor in his chair around. See, you had every opportunity to commit this crime. <laughs> what a wonderful imagination you have, young man. A hidden gun, you say? And I shot the professor's dead body, did I? Well, I'm terribly sorry, but... You don't have a shred of evidence. Exactly. And as you have nothing to support your wild claims, the prosecution's stance remains unchanged. The victim, Dr. John H. Wilson, was killed by a gunshot to the chest. Delivered in cold blood by the accused, Ryonosuke Naruhodo. Uh. Hmm. This is unbelievable. How can this be happening? We had her, but now... Is she really going to get away with it? The way she destroyed that evidence was obscene. Ryonosuke. Yeah? You've come this far, but now... Now you're the only one who can finish it. Bruh. What? What do you mean? You've lost a vital piece of evidence, it's true. So if there are any clues left for us to use now... It must be... In your head. In my head? Cause it's all in my head. Sorry. <laughs> Thinking of a Nelly song, sorry. You told me before that your powers of observation were the one thing you could really depend upon. Well, yeah, that's true, but... But I didn't manage to notice that this woman was a foreigner with a swan on her head. Bruh. Well, think back again now. Try to remember every last detail about the scene that day. Everything you saw, everything you felt, every color, every smell. Hmm. What I saw, what I felt, every color. Is Kazuma right? Somewhere in the vibrant memory of this same scene in my head, could there be another clue to expose the identity of Dr. Wilson's killer? We got blues clues. Actually, Kazuma, I think I might have something. Thinking back over everything I saw, I think I might have an unco uncovered another clue. <laughs> you always have something up your sleeve, don't you, Ryanosuke? Come on then, let's wipe the smug smile off that English woman's face with some evidence. All right, I can't wait. Bruh. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's been nagging me for some while that something feels amiss in my memories of that day. Uh, Whatever it is. Huh? I looked up what the word means. Causing slight but persisting an a persistent annoyance, discomfort, or anxiety. Whatever it is, it could be the key to arriving to the truth about all this. It's here somewhere. The clue that shows who Dr. Wilson's real killer must have been is. Yeah, this blood stain? That's nice tomato sauce, dude. Okay. Yeet. Take that. that! I don't like that fucking... I'll take Inspector the... Hasanoga, answer me this. I'll take his take that over his yes. <laughs> uh, yes, what is it? Uh, he's still miles away, probably thinking about that bottle being smashed. As you said a number of times now, you strive for perfection in your investigations, don't you? Absolutely. 
I wonder, therefore, if perhaps you took anything else from the crime of scene. <laughs> I was gonna read that backwards and I realized what happened. The crime of, <clears throat> the crime of the scene, got it. <laughs> Sorry, I know it was mean to laugh, but. <laughs> took anything else from the scene of the crime. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Like, for instance, the plate of steak that you took to the victim's table that day. Objection. Wait a minute. Where are you going with this? Shut up. Where are you going with this little boy? Just a memory that's been troubling me. What memory? I saw the scene shown in the photographic print with my own eyes that day. And I saw on that wooden base of the plate that steak was served on was a splattering of blood. The villain in this case is almost good as TNT. Oh my god. Hi, Nandy Nando. Nice to see you. What? Hmm. Nando's here? He is. Oh, really? Oh, cool. He works for Nintendo. Hi, Nando. Oh my god. Really? And what of it? Obviously, that must have happened when you shot the professor. No, that can't be the case. Uh, British gasp. Take a good look at this photograph. Because every time you do, it makes me laugh. <laughs> Sorry. And the relative position of everything there. The plate of steak is almost directly behind the victim. If I'm supposed to have shot Dr. Wilson in the chest from the front... There's no way that blood from the victim could have ended up directly behind him. Look at this photograph. Nando says hi. Ah! Mm. Yes. Blood to have made it onto the plate. It implies the plate was between the victim and the shooter. Which means the shooter must have been sitting opposite the professor as you were. I beg your pardon? Objection! Objection? This, this is beyond ridiculous, fabricated nonsense. Is the court seriously expected to believe something the accused has just apparently just remembered seeing? Hold it. His first Let hold it. Hold it. Oh. oh no. Oh, it's him, dude. Oh. Oh, that was him? That was that him. Was him. Him, dude, that's why I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound like me. <laughs> that's crazy. Oh shit. This. Mm. this could be the moments that my entire career in the police force has been leading to. Oh my god. Inspector, you mean. Yes, I took the plate in the interest of preserving evidence from the scene of the crime. I took it. Meat and all, and I don't oh. care if they call me a crime scene thief because of it. This man wanted the meat. He wanted the meat. Never heard the English voice, I played the Japanese. Yeah, we're doing the English voices because I'm too lazy to change it. You did what? I took the steak that you had been eating, Miss Brett. I took the steak that the sergeant had been eating. Oh shit. Fighting pose. <laughs> and I did it all in the name of justice. Oh my god. That we could find out for sure whether or not there was a bloodstain on Miss Brett's plate. We must examine it now. Let's fucking go. He's being Inspector. a goat right now. The court wishes to examine the plate from the victim's table immediately. Yes, sir. Sheesh. Sorry for the delay. Here's what you ordered. The steak. Well, what about the blood? Is there blood on it? Of course there isn't. Quickly, Inspector, the blood man. Show the court. Of course. Examine the plate at your leisure. Nothing here. No. No blood. No blood anywhere. But, but no, that's 
Impossible. Bakana. I know I saw it. I'm sure of it. It was right there on the table behind the professor. There was blood on the side of the plate. <laughs> what an unbecoming expression, little boy. Look at my swan. You see, this is why I always say you can't trust what the Japanese tell you. Ah. Uh. Her racism too strong. <laughs> couldn't agree more. In the dec in the case of this disgrace to the Empire, bruh. Thanks for the hydrate, Otter. I believe we may finally have reached a conclusion in this trial. Let's hope so. This let's pretend attempt at a courtroom proceedings is painful to watch. But I do promise to do my best to forget about it all when it's over. No more hydrate. The sorry looking stick reveals the facts all too clearly. If the sorry looking accused wishes to examine it again, be my guest. The plate of steak has been entered into the court record. We're so looking at that steak. Oh my god, we're doing this again, dude. Uh, Alright. Was the plate I saw, or thought I saw, just a figment of my imagination? This is it now. I've lost. You know, Skate. Oh no, dude. The bands still fly. It's not over yet. He still got his powers. It's not over yet. Not until the final gavel, or at least if my head and stops flowing. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Never stop believing in yourself. Keep looking forward, no matter what. Don't stop believing. Believe in myself? Really? Believe it. Uh, <clears throat> Maybe I should at least examine the evidence for myself. As the evidence requested by the defense has not been shown to the to be problematic in any way, I presume any further examination of evidence in this trial will be unnecessary. Does the defense have any objections? Yes. That blood stain was going to cleanse this trial for me. Can this plate of steak reveal any other clues at all? Yes. There is another clue. Uh, Your Excellency, please wait. This plate of beef is hiding another clue. Another clue that will reveal the shocking truth. Objection? The only thing that's shocking here is your unhealthy fascination with beef steak. Your Excellency, I think I've made myself clear, haven't I? I will not be able to turn a blind eye to any more unnecessary procrastination in this trial. So sorry, Miss Brett, but we must ensure a thorough examination of the evidence. I will not give a ruling until I'm completely satisfied that all reasonable doubt has been dispelled. I like this judge. I see. He's a great judge. As a newly affirmed ally of my country, that's still your position, is it? Thank you, Your Excellency. Counsel, for the defense, you will now clearly show the court to what you are alluding. What precisely on this plate of beef is the new clue to be found? Saving. Gotta examine. Huh? Well, we have to examine the beef. How do I save, dude? I need to save. Oh, no. I didn't get a chance to save, dude! It's gonna- uh, fuck. I already know what to do, but it's gonna fuck me up again, dude. This happened last time. I was like, it's- it took it's, me- It's the fucking bite in the steak, right? It's like right here or something, and it's so annoyed to fucking click on. Default, where did you click on this at? Wait, what? I literally- Well, I clicked it on the steak. I was like, I clicked on the bite of the steak and now there's dialogue. <laughs> okay. Wait, what? There's two bites in the steak. I did the left one. Do a it, what the fuck? It actually picked it up, dude? <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's your jar. Bruh. <laughs> The first time I did this, it took me 20 tries, and I was molding, dude. <laughs> it's your jar. 
The steak is your jar. Huh? What the? What in the world is this? I think it's a Koban coin. The hallmark is from the Hoei era, I believe. No, no, I don't mean what it is. I mean, what is it doing there? Wait, did you say it was a ho Hoei Koban? Yes, and apart from the meat juices, it looks to be in good condition. I imagine it's very valuable. This isn't the first time today there's been talk of a Hawaii Caban. I've heard of pearls before swine, but I've never heard of bullion in the bullion. God fucking damn it. I don't think you ever will again. This is extraordinary, though. This means... Let's present that Caban. Got it. <laughs> uh, that's Got not it. but okay. Oh, is it not? Okay, hold on. Give me a moment. Ah, uh, I hit. Oh my god, this actual no, dude. Please, let me just get through this, please, dude. I swear to God, if it flaps this meat back down, dude, I'm gonna mold. I don't know why it would put the meat down. Let's <laughs> present it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Got it, bruv. <laughs> <laughs> Got it, bruv. I got Good. it. Good gracious, that's... Uh, Koban? What on earth? A Hoei era one at that. Miss Brad. This is in fact the beef steak that you ordered at that restaurant that day in question, isn't it? British ellipses? Tell me. Why is there an old coin seemingly hidden underneath the meat? Shut up! Shut up. Look at my swan. What a ridiculous question. How should I know? I've never seen that thing before in my life. I don't want to know what it is, but I want no part of it. Objection! Objection? I fail to see how this is relevant. A coin under the meat? That could simply have been a careless mistake by the chef in a moment of distraction. Objection! What? Objection. Don't be absurd. We're supposed to believe that this happened by the by accident in the kitchen. Rare Hoei Koban just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of steak. This turns out to be irrelevant to the case. I'll rip up my ticket to Great Britain right now. Jesus. He's right, though. It can't be a coincidence. Your Excellency. Yes, Council. A rare Hoi Caban just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of steak. If this turns out to be irrelevant to the case, I'll give up my lawyer job right now. Objection! Objection? By all means, don't let us stop you. No one invited you anyway. Shut up. Shut up. Perhaps, little boy, you should realize that it is you who is irrelevant. Even though I'm the one on trial here? The point is, it's essential that we ask the owner of this coin if he can explain what it's doing under that stake. The owner. Yeah, it's obvious there's only one person it can belong to. The owner of the Caban that was found underneath the beef steak is. Here we go, dude. Here we go, dude. It, it is. Take that. You... Take that. Hi, Tree God. Nice to see you. Obviously, it can only be the antique dealer and owner. How do you pronounce that, Tifa? Azute. Rasute Kyurio Korikuta-san. Kyuri? As in Mr. Cucumber something? Honestly, these ridiculous Japanese names are quite unfathomable. Well, yes. The old man who testified earlier along signed the military sergeant, correct? Yes, Your Excellency. Isn't he not even a lawyer? Yeah, I don't know, man. I remember him saying that he was up to something with his Koban coin when it happened. Exactly the moment the gun was fired. 
gunshot interested me not. I was falling dizzy on the floor. 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 Yeah, this is the first case. It's getting pretty intense. You're busy on the floor. Floor, floor. Sorry, what were you doing? Uh, mama, mama, mama. You fucking bitch. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. Well, that's exactly what I said in the first time. <laughs> I'll take for treasure. 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 That booty. God damn it. Indeed, the whole way, Eric Kobod, my price coin. 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 Then this hoy, Eric Bon. Do you mean to tell me? Objection. Objection? No, no, no. Please, why would Korekuta-san's koban be sandwiched between the victim's beef steak and its plate? It makes no sense. Yes. Yes. Which is why I'm asking to bring Korekuta-san back to the witness stand so we can ask him. Officer. Bring both witnesses that testified earlier back in here. Let's fucking go. Without a moment's delay. Do, 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 I can't believe we come back around to that pair again. But I have a hunch, a strong one at that, that if we chase down the real significance of this caban, we'll find that it's key element in this case. To be continued. Here we go again, part four. Aw, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Here we go again. Aw, oh, shit, dude. It's Alec Jones back at it again, dude. <laughs> what is all this about? Who'd have been called up again? Don't you realize that it's dinner time for little baby Ido? When my son's belly's empty, he's presented a pack of wolves. Oh, my God. Exploited by the police we were, like miserable dogs, forced to bear false witness. Look at my knife. <laughs> when passed from this courtroom myself, I became a ruined man in a trice. A worthless, withered antique. Nothing more have I to say. The sun is set on this Razute shop owner's existence. Yeah, Tree God, if you get a chance to play any of the Ace Attorney games, I highly recommend it. I've played the trilogy, and it was really, really good. This is part of the... This is the newest one that came out. Um, how many games are in this collection? Uh, on the, in the Chronicles? Two. Yeah. Two? Yeah. Yeah. So very, very good. I highly and, recommend. Well, two and some like fun little DLC cases that we can do sometime later. Gotcha. Okay. So if you as it may. Yeah. Pre you as it may, Kor Kutasana. Something has come to light that requires your clarification. As far as your Razzutae memory serves, have you ever seen his Kobat? Oh my oh! god! That's, yes, that's it. The one, the very one, the very exact, of, exact one that it is. I'm a foot! Are they on Switch or PC? Yes, both. Resplendent, splendiferous Hawaii treasure that my rusty bones managed to misplace that fateful day. It can't be. Man, man, Alex hmm. Jones just got stabbed in the foot. <laughs> As I thought. Young man. Enlighten this decrepit old fool. Put me out of my misery. Take this knife. Oh, wait, where'd my knife go? <laughs> it went to Alex Jones' treasure? butt. Where was it dropped? <laughs> oh, there it is. I'm not sure if it was dropped anywhere. Found your coin sandwich between a beefsteak and its plate soaking in the seasoned meat juices. Yeah, that was, um, there is a baby on his back. It's his kid because he doesn't make enough in the military. Sandwich soaking? Seriously? Clearly it couldn't have fallen there by accident. Which means... Somebody must have hidden it there on purpose. Somebody concealed my Hawaii treasure between a slab of meat and a metal plate. Ooh, we mad. Who would do such a thing with such an unclutchable thing? Why are you shocked, old man next to me? <laughs> See if I can hit a bottle next to him, dude. What the fuck? Like, this man swinging for the mountains, dude. <laughs> Bruh. It's not like I'm gonna hit the baby. 
Hit the you baby. You could hit the baby. <laughs> you know what Alex Jones would say. Destroy something. the child. Oh my god. Corrupt them all. <laughs> I was gonna say something about chemicals in the water. Yeah. Excuse me. Could I say something? Yes, of course. Proceed, Inspector Hasunoga. Mm. I mentioned this earlier on in the trial, but... I was working undercover in the restaurant in order to investigate another case. Ah, yes, that's right. The secret undercover operation. Carnival is a high-class Western cuisine restaurant. It attracts wealthy diners, including many foreigners. Recently, there's been a run of similarly executed thefts targeting the restaurant's rich clientele. A number of such incidents have been reported to the police bureau. Hmm. Wicked crimes indeed. Ooh. Got a thief. I wanted to nip the case in the bud quickly, especially with so many foreigners being affected. So that's why you were standing undercover, is it? Mm -hmm. Yes. We took on the job of waiter at the restaurant in order to flush out the criminal. It seems likely that this Koban incident is the work of the same thief. Unbeknownst to us, there was a master thief at work in the restaurant on a regular basis. It was the Hamburglar. The place was already the scene of several crimes, it seems. I don't know about the master thief part, but, uh... The identity of the person who stole and hit Korakuta Sans Koban is all too clear. What? What? I think the court would like to hear the defense's view on this matter. Tell us, who was the despicable scoundrel that stole Cork with Dixon's Caban and hid it under the stake? It was Alex Jones, right? Yeah, he needed to fund his fucking podcast. Take that! Take that! Obviously, it could only be you. Sergeant Yesa Nosa. Yesa Nosa. What? How? How dare you? You... You monster! Monster? I, I stole that Caban, did I? I'm the Master Thief of La Carnival, am I? You're seriously accusing me of the crimes, cadet? Yeah. But it wasn't me. It was Ido. Ido's the master ma mastermind behind all this. Blame uh. the child. Corrupt them all. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Huh? You would push the blame for your crimes onto your own son? An innocent little baby? It's you who's the monster, Sergeant Nosa! Ooh. He did recently lose a lawsuit, might be losing even more soon. Good! You... You... Clippity clumpity clump clip! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh. Re What the fuck? Nippon Imperial Army Sergeant Iyanosa! Preparing to stand down in the Supreme Court, sir! What the fuck? That's one athletic baby, dude. That back crack, though, yeah. That's why you don't re without stretching. Do any of you know of the or extraordinary low wages of the Nippon Imperial Army pays those it expects to keep our country safe? I mean, that's true in America. I understand that the <clears throat> I understand that the temporary increase in taxation owing to the recently ended conflicts remain in place, and I've heard it's hard for lower rank soldiers to make a living. Yes, all I want is to put a hot meal on the table for my son. That's why you were stealing things at the restaurant? The place is heaving with money. Every three days I'd go there and do reconnaissance for a target. And I enjoy chomping my way through a good steak at the same time. 
It sounds like he doesn't bother with a knife and fork even, which is worryingly believable. I mean, mood. And your target that day was the old man and his cobot. Yes, sir. He was an easy mark. I slipped a coin in my pocket without any trouble at all. Hmm, a veritable, a veritable phantom thief you are. I wonder why I stabbed you un <laughs> unintentionally. But now it is intentional, you motherfucker. Oh my god. I love this banner. Yeah, this is nice. <laughs> I was all set to leave a stake. I was halfway through devouring when it happened. Bang. Yes, when the professor was shot. I knew that if the police conducted a search and found the coin in my pocket, I'd be finished. I do too. So I hid the incriminating evidence as fast as I could, on the double. I slipped it under the stake. Hoping that I'd be able to rendezvous, to rendezvous with it again at a later date. Shit. Hmm. Hmm. Eh. <laughs> Awkward silence. Who's saying this? You. Oh, this is ridiculous. Perhaps you could carry on with this absurd prattling in your own time. Well, Miss Brett. Oh, of course, dear lady, of course. How rude of us. I'm quite sure there's no need to detain you any longer at all. May the esteemed gentleman please be excused, Your Excellency. Mm, indeed. The death of the Caban was clearly perpetrated by this baby saddle sergeant. It would certainly appear to be unrelated to Dr. Wilson's murder. Of course it is. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat. The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. Nonsense, is it? Uh, um, well, uh, oof. And as for picking up your steak and biting it into it without using a knife and fork, it's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Very well. Now that all the questions concerning this witness's testimony have been answered, I see no further justification for detaining her. Miss Brett, you are free to leave. Thank you, Your Excellency. Good luck, everyone. And good day. Uh. Inosuke, what's the matter with you? This is no time for daydreaming. Oh, uh, no, it's just... Something about Mrs. Brett's parting words there got me thinking. I can't quite work out what exactly, but something she said jarred with me. I feel like there was a contradiction in there somewhere, somewhere something that didn't quite add up. If that's the case, don't just stand there thinking. Make your voice heard. Yeah, this lady's sussy, Baka. Sorry? You can think later, but if you don't call out now, it'll be too late. The trial will be over. Hold it! Hold it! Wait, Miss Brett. What is it now? I'm afraid just one last time. There's something I'd like to ask you. I'd like you to explain the contradiction in your parting words from just a few moments ago. What are you talking about? What contradiction? Objection! Objection? What new student nonsense is this? Well, what parting words are you talking about, Rihanna? Oh, I can do the thing. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat? The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. And as for picking up your stick and biting into it without using a knife and fork, it's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. <laughs> Go off. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. What she did, she... <laughs> What she said there exposed an undeniable contradiction. 
going to need some evidence, Council. If Miss Brett's words truly are contradictory, contradictory, I don't know what the fuck happened there. Where is the evidence to prove it? As it, is it just, it's the stake, right? Yeah. Yeet. Yeah. Sometimes you're too hungry to bother with knife and fork. I mean, yeah. Beg that! The steak that Miss Brett had been eaten before the professor was killed, yes? Go on. More accurately, Your Excellency. The steak that was on the victim's table just before the professor was killed. And now you're just splitting hairs. British ellipses. Not true. Doesn't something about this steak strike you as very unnatural? Unnatural? What on earth do you mean? It's extremely obvious I'm talking about the shape of the edges where it's been beaten. British gasp. I see you've noticed it too, Miss Brad. Notice what exactly, Council? Just a few moments ago, Miss Brett claimed. No English woman could ever contemplate picking up a steak and biting into it without using a knife and a fork. Bruv. Of course she did. She's a refined English gentlewoman herself. Then take a good look at this steak. In particular, the edges where it's been eaten. Dun dun dun. As you can see, there are clearly defined barbaric teeth there. Ah! Oh. oh. British ellipses. Ah! Oh. Looks like Miss Brett has realized something. So, if the witness, as she claims, wouldn't contemplate eating anything with a using a knife and a fork, there shouldn't be teeth marks in the steak at all. Objection! Objection? But what is your actual point? Perhaps the delightful Miss Brett was ravenously hungry and Shut couldn't up. help her. Shut up. British ellipses. Oh, um, whatever you say, dear lady. As I said, I really must be leaving now. Afternoon tea with the Minister of Justice cannot possibly wait any longer. Of course, of course. This will all be over in the blink of an eye. Rest assured, I'm about to put this rookie in his place. Just leave Shut everything up. to- Shut up! I've heard enough! Me and my swan have heard enough, you irritating little spectacled samurai relic! Oh shit. Of, of course, dear lady! What's the matter, Miss Brett? Have we ruffled your feathers? No, just my swan. Clearly the witness knows what this means. She realized the catastrophic implications those teeth marks in the stake have for her. Inosuke, do you know where you're going with this? Nope. Yeah, now at last it's all... It's all coming together now. It's all coming together. <laughs> Mysterious teeth marks in the steak that allegedly been eaten with cutlery. With cutlery. The reason why the bloodstain I know I saw somehow seems to have disappeared. Hmm. And most importantly, the evidence that proves once and for all who shot Doctor Wilson that day. Ooh. Okay. I accept those teeth marks in the steak are a little unnatural. As you put it, Council. Why does this sound like Kingdom Hearts music? But what exactly are you suggesting that tells us? Everything, Your Excellency. Everything? Yeah, I believe those barbaric teeth marks in the stake here amount to conclusive evidence in this case. I oh, should have got my dude crying about Roxas, I'm sorry. Evidence that will prove ah. beyond any doubt who shot Dr. Wilson. <laughs> Shut up. Conclusive evidence? How many times have me and my swan heard that today? You wouldn't know the meaning of the phrase. Typical Japanese empty threats. Shut up. <laughs> How can you be so sure, racist? Nice, Nan Nando. <laughs> oh, it's quite simple. If you really had such conclusive evidence, you would have presented it to the court long ago. Actually, the evidence I'm talking about hasn't been brought before the court yet. Hasn't been... what? But just because it hasn't been shown yet, doesn't mean the evidence does not exist. Objection! 
objection? This is absurd. The tribal has run several hours already, and you say there's evidence yet to be brought forward. There can't be. I don't believe you have it. Objection. Objection. I don't believe there is someone who does have it. Wait, what? I don't. I believe there is someone who does have it. Someone in this very courtroom. Bridges, gasp. And if that person's willing to submit that piece of evidence I'm referring to, it will solve everything remaining. It will solve every remaining mystery about this case. Let's fucking go. Very well, I have a feeling this will be my last request of the defense in this trial. Who possesses this conclusive evidence that will reveal the truth about this whole affair? God damn it, Tifa. <laughs> It's pretty obvious who has it. I blink your who? Satoru? Take that! Take that! The answer is obvious. It's Inspector Hasunoga. What? Uh, I have it. Yes. You think I've been withholding conclusive evidence? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, oh, oh. I my mask. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. Oh, no, 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 no. Everyone's oh, no, attention has no, been no, focused no. on this steak with the teeth marks. Oh, yes. no, 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 no. Now, earlier this afternoon, Sergeant Nosa told the court the following I'd enjoy chomping my way through a good steak. And as well as admitting to stealing the Korakuta-san's coin, he told us that he slipped it under the stake. You, you watch it, cadet. I'm a superior officer. Bruh, if you're just a sergeant, you are not. Sergeant Before. Nosa, could you please confirm something for me? Was the stake that you put under the coin, in fact, your own stake? Tension. Affirmative, of course. I might be a soldier in the Imperial Nippon Army, but still... I'm not brave enough to ask a foreigner gentle lady if she'd mind me handling her meal to hide something in it. I was gonna say handling my man handling my meat, but I couldn't have missed it. it says meal. I was like, oh shit, dude, I caught myself. Bruh. <laughs> that would've been so clip worthy. <laughs> Bruh. In other words, the statement that the detective submitted as evidence earlier was in fact Sergeant Nose's meal. Objection? But that makes no sense. And that plate was taken from the victim's table. <laughs> yeah, the gentlewoman doesn't take bites out of her steak, nor did she have any opportunity to steal the coin. Of course I didn't steal it. To even suggest such a thing would be an affront to the entire British Empire. Well then, how do you explain this paradox? Paradox? Exactly! Surely you're not going to suggest that the sergeant switched the two stakes over. Where does a sergeant rank on the totem pole in the military? Okay, if it's the same as the army, like, the sergeant is, like, the lowest level of a non-commissioned officer. Like, that's, like, the very, very first leadership role that you ever fucking get. Like, I'm a superior officer. If it's the same way as, like, the U.S. military, you're, like, like, yeah, you're above, like, people that just enlisted, but it's, like, the very non-commissioned officer. It, basically, you didn't go to officer school, but you're in a, um, you're in a leadership position, which makes you lower than an officer. So it's, like, a, so a sergeant, just a regular sergeant, is, like, the lowest level of leader that you can be. Provided that this is following U.S. military rules. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. You. Still your line. You did switch the plates. Uh, uh, well, after it happened, the um. Bang. When I saw the civilian had been murdered right in front of my own eyes like that, I panicked. As I said, I immediately lifted my stake and hit the coin underneath it. But then we 
When the waiter announced he was an undercover policeman, I thought I had it. If he decided to investigate my Schlabamina, that'd be... <laughs> Bruh. That'd be it. I'd be getting my marching orders. So when the cadet here was arrested and taken off to the kitchen, I seized my chance. Get down, child. <laughs> with military precision and timing, I switched my steak with the one on the foreign lady's, <laughs> foreign lady's table. What? You can't have. I, I never saw you do such a thing. It was called Operation Lightning Bolt. There was no time for strategic planning. It was do or die, I tell you. So yes, I did what had to be done. The fucking baby laugh. I can't. He's a nobody with a smidge of power that let it go to his head. Yes. I, don't, I didn't read what the line was. Believable? That unbelievable. Bacana! However, fear not, prosecutor's son. What now? I swear on the brass buttons on my uniform. That's all I did, sir. All you did? That's plenty, Sergeant. Yes! Yeah. So... If Sergeant Nosa switched the plates over, it means he took Miss Brett's steak in. The plate was on, back to his own table. Yes, that follows. Inspector Hasanoga. Yes? Earlier in this trial, you told the court this. You said that you have not only taken Miss Brett's steak after the incident, but also the Sergeant's. That to preserve evidence, you've taken both. That's correct. Then please present it to the court now. That plate that was actually on the victim table at the precise moment he was shot! Oh, let's fucking go. Shut up! Shut up! What can that possibly tell us now? I mean, a cold slab of tough meat? I can have the slightest bearing on the case. Objection! No. I'm not wriggling your way out of this time, out of it this time, lady. I, I beg your pardon. Surely you're not that forgetful. Do you remember the reason why the stick pan promises to prove such a problem for you? No. <sighs> you're the ones who decided it was a problem, not me. The reason the defense asked to see that plate was to confirm something the defendant remembers seeing. Thinks he remembers. I'm quite sure what I saw, Miss Brett. I like this cornered theme. This is a good one. On the side of the plate that was on the table directly behind Dr. Wilson, there was a clear splattering of blood from the gunshot wound to the victim's chest. I believe the defendant's memory serves him well. <laughs> now we have the evidence to prove it. You're eating from Miss Brett. Let us not prolong this any further. Inspector, you will show the evidence to the court. Present the beef steak plate that was originally on the victim's table at the time of the incident. Fighting mm. pose. <laughs> yes, sir. How much blood do you think on that towel? Too much. Oh. Sorry for keeping you. Can't you wait now? Huh? Here's the other steak and its plate. Please feel free to examine it. Here's the blood. Is there a coban under that one too? Oh my god. Blood stain. It's clearly visible. Yes. Yeah. Now this makes everything clear. The blood you can see on the side of the plate shows that at the moment the victim was shot, he was facing the table back to me. In other words, it's impossible for Naruto san to have shot the victim. Ugh! It, it can't be. In fact, there's only one person who could possibly have shot Dr. Wilson from the front. I'm sure everyone knows by now who that person is. Uh, um. That's right. 
Miss Jezile Brett. It's you, you fucking scumbag. Here we go. <sighs> Oh, oh shit, her fucking swan went flaccid, dude. Outdone. By a Japanese. Me. By a Japanese schoolboy. No, no, no. Oh shit, it's back up, dude. Oh. The swan is erect. Yeah! Wait, did it just like. Just... Oh, babies. Oh, the chickens. Ah! What the fuck? <laughs> What oh the shit! What the fuck? <laughs> what is happening? Break down! Break down! <laughs> Where does he get the cool one? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> he ain't special. <laughs> Please excuse my. Little outburst. Grand Sally? I briefly lost my composure. I'm sorry about the swanlings. Most unbecoming behavior for an antiquous gentlewoman. Forgive me. My I must go. My people need me. Well, Miss Brandt. <laughs> I heard... think it's time for you. It's time you told the court what happened that day. The truth this time. Ellipses. I'll try to stop laughing. <laughs> Gladly, Your Excellency. It was it was I who took the professor's life using Karar. As you surmised, I chose that particular day for one very important reason. The professor had a dental appointment for the extraction of one of his teeth in the morning. He planned to kill the professor knowing that no trace of poison would be found in his water. Because cure air is unheard of here in Japan. Yes. Of course, I never intended to remain at the restaurant for as long as I did. I only needed to see the professor take one tiny sip of his water and it would all be over. I would place the steak I had ordered in front of him to make it appear as though he had been drinking alone. And leave immediately. However... Before any of that happened, there was an unexpected visitor at the professor's table. That would be me, I suppose. Yes, you. Who else? Such a trifling matter. But the fact that you decided to come over to greet the professor... ...meant that I had lost my chance to slip away unnoticed. In due course, the professor took a sip of his water and was paralyzed. I made sure he was sitting in his chair such that he wouldn't fall. There was no going back at that point. So I concocted a plan on the spur of the moment. Plant and Dr. Wilson's murder on this innocent man. Ellipses. I happen to know that the professor always carried a gun. I decided to use that fact to my advantage. I had the bottle of Curare in my handbag. And... My own pistol concealed under my skirt. Uh, under your skirt? And so I was right, there were two guns. Yes. And then I finished my coffee and got up to leave. That's when I noticed Professor's gun, which you had presumably placed on the floor place where you were sure I would notice it? And everything went according to plan. You noticed the gun, as I'd intended. And then, just as you bent down to pick it up... Bang! Oh my That's god, That's when you shot the Murphy. professor with your own gun. Even though, at that point, he was already dead. Oh my wa moshinderu, as you say. Here in this barbarous tongue. Naturally, the gunshot caused a commotion, at which point the waiter appeared. Obviously, I assumed our son was the culprit and apprehended him. I took him to the pantry that adjoins the kitchen and locked him inside. 
That's when I took the opportunity to turn the professor and his chair around. Because, of course, he needed to make it look like the defendant had shot Dr. Wilson from where he had picked up the gun. If only to let him look through his skirt, right? So, there you have it. That is the entirety of my misdemeanor. <laughs> Your Excellency? Yes? I wonder... Might I speak with you in private later? I shall call on you. Thank you. Good day then, everyone. <laughs> I hope you can forgive me, Naruhodo-san. Bruh. It would seem this trial has finally run its course. I presume the prosecution is in agreement. This this can't be. Takasuchi Auchi does not lose. Not to the likes of this, this rookie student. Gigi Nori. <laughs> you better start getting used to the, used to the tough opposition. Ah, Fionosuke Haruno Hodo. What? Yeah. She faded to a new plane of existence, like, save the world. Save the world, my final message. Goodbye. <laughs> this insult to the Auchi family name will never be forgotten. To become conceited with age, Council. The old have to stand aside and make way for the new. Yeah, boomer. Well, this Wilson's name in Japan is Watson. Oh my god. It's the way of the world. May you never forget that. Ooh. Bruh. He's bald. Marky I'll Tails just tucked you in, Tifwa. I already... No, I... Okay, Marky. <laughs> A thousand millennia may pass, and still the Alchi clan will never measure up to the Naruhodo clan. Let's fucking go. That's foreshadowing. <laughs> this trial in the Supreme Court of Japan. Well, I believe go down in history as the start of a new chapter in our country's judicial system. Despite being summoned as the accused, you, Ryunosuke Naruhodo, presented an excellent case. Woo! I thank you, Your Excellency. The use of evidence and deduction to unravel the truth is a modern methodology. Methodology, after all, has only been a short few decades since our country's opened its doors to the wider world. But the Westerners' idea of science are rapidly gaining acceptance here. I feel sure that the science will soon bring new methods of investigation and new procedures of justice. A future of law awaits. But what it will look like, I cannot begin to imagine. Still pretty fucking corrupt. That is for the young to pursue. Kazuma Asogi. Yes. Does he call Sasuke Sasuke? Oh my god. After this trial, you are set to embark on a journey of discovery to the illustrious British Empire. Learn all you can. Absorb everything of the wider world that you are able to. And do not forget to fulfill the mission imposed upon you. I understand, Your Excellency. What was that about? Why do you look so grave all of a sudden? I'll tuck him in with his mic, baby, then they can hear him. Oh my god! Oh! Got him, dude. Who said that? Uh, my dude. Talk shit. Oh no! What are you gonna do to her? Okay, I see how it is. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, he did the thing. <laughs> ah, never mind. As for you, Ranasuke Narahudo. <laughs> oh. Yeah? <laughs> In you I sense, how can I put it, unusual potential? I very much look forward to seeing how you carry that onwards. Yeah, my dude, sorry not sorry. It was funny. <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellency. Hello. Shit, dude, it was a zoom in on me, dude. Extreme close up! It is time to deliver the final verdict. I hereby find it offended Ryanosuke Narahoto. Not guilty. Thank God. Finally. Holy shit, this took too long. Man, still audible gasp over there. Audible gasp. And cherry blossoms. <laughs> This court room is now adjourned. Thank Andrew. God. Uh. 22nd November, 2.46 p.m. Supreme Court of Judiciature Defendants Antechamber 5. I can't believe it. I can't believe what's happened. I made it. I defended myself and made it through that horrendous trial. Thank God. Yonosuke. You finally pulled it off. Congratulations. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> Thank you, Kazuma. <laughs> no, no. It was a pleasure to watch you at work. Oh, I love him. Oh, you owe me an extra large suki. Yaki from the place on Yume University Street. Don't forget. Hell yeah. Oh, that's me. Good afternoon. All your hard work has certainly paid off. Oh, that was the girl. That's oh, that was me. Oh, shit. Okay. Congratulations to both of you I for proving Naruhoto san's innocence. Ah, our trusty judicial assistant. You worked hard for that result too, you know. Oh, no. I didn't do anything. Thank you so much. If we hadn't had that research report of Miss Bright, I don't know how things would have turned out. Your kind words should really be for my father. I was simply doing as he asked. It was his idea for me to go to the university and investigate. Your father? Ah, oh, yes, of course. Forgive me for intruding on court proceedings, Your Excellency. Susato Mikatoba, judicial assistant to the offense. Speaking of Mikatoba. Ah, there you are. I believe congratulations are in order. Sup? Arolo, you did an excellent job. Thank you, Professor. Oh no, it is I who should be thanking you, after all. Your efforts exposed the true criminal that took the life of my good friend. Good friend? Oh, yeah, you mentioned that before. It was you who actually invited Dr. Wilson to Yume University, wasn't it? Mm, yes, that's right. Professor Mikotoba studied overseas himself. Went to study forensic medicine in Great Britain. Forensics, let's fucking go. Presumably that's when you met Dr. Wilson. Exactly. In those days, we worked together in the same hospital. Oh, you worked together? I've never heard you mention that before. Well, it was a long time ago now. Besides... When Chad's playing, cat Chad's killing. <laughs> I mean, it's only been killing it's for a little bit. Great Britain is a magnificent country. It leads the world. In science, medicine, engineering, culture, and of course, bitches. I mean, in-law. <laughs> Bitchin'. Watch and learn, my boy. 
see what's happening in the world's largest melting pot. My boy, this law school is what all true lawyers strive for. I will. All I can. I swear on this. The spirit of the Sogi clan. Let's fucking go. You're not taking that sword of Great Britain, are you? Of course I am. The Japanese man's katana is his soul. This blade shows me where I need to go. It cuts down anything that's in my way. Alright. I've definitely seen how sharp it is already with my own eyes. It reminds me, what's happened to the woman? To Giselle Brett, I mean. After all, she's guilty of murder. Ah, oh, yes, her. Mm. It's not easy to tell you this, but. What do you mean? Surely she's going to face trial herself now. She's the, co the true culprit, after all. Mm. We'll be leaving Japan in the very near future. Shanghai. Oh, shit. What Shanghai? Why would why would they bother going to Shanghai? They they closed Disneyland there. Zelbrett will not appear in court again in this country. I'm certain I'm certain of that. What? But why not? I have no idea who that is. It's a matter of consular jurisdiction. Oh. That's him. I oh. took a guess, I'm sorry. Matter of consular jurisdiction. Oh shit, dude, it's Mector House Noga, dude. It's it's the good detective. The competent detective. You're trying to say Gumshoe's not competent? I mean He's competent in his own right, though goofier than him. Fair. Like Gumshoe's like goofy funny. This man is like awkward goofy. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, they're both yeah. goofy, but Hasanoga's more like, I'm gonna be the best! Pose. And then Gumshoe's like, I hard hey, pal. Fair enough. And I love both of them, but different reasons. It was a hard fought battle in the courtroom today. Very impressive to watch. I must congratulate. But, but, what's all this consular uh, jurisdiction? Cannot try this particular foreigner for her crimes here in Japan. What? We can't try her. But then who? Who's going to be able to try her and bring her to justice? The British Consular Court will hear her case somewhere far away where our voices can't be heard. Why a Consular Court? Professor, I simply don't understand. I thought consular courts were a thing of the past now that we've signed the friendship treaty. Yes, in normal circumstances, you're right. And so long as this is not a serious incident of a highly political nature to our rep respective governments, you can't invoke the consular court just like that. Oh, can't they? Yes, she's a student, but it doesn't justify our government's making secret agreements about her fate, does it? Something strange is going on. Yeah. Something mysterious is afoot. So... Miss Brett can't be held accountable for her actions here in Japan? Afraid that for the young students... Today's trial was nothing more than a game all along. There was never any danger of comeuppance for her. I don't believe it. The British government's foreign affairs ministry has demanded that we hand over custody of Miss Brett. Shit. They're obviously taking this case of a foreign student committing murder very seriously. It's all going to change from now on. We can make it change. 
So she has diplomatic immunity, but wouldn't the British Empire want her prosecuted because she killed another Englishman? See, that... That's why I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is a time of great turmoil, this new era heralded by the start of the 20th century. One day, I have no doubt. That woman will receive the- that woman will receive the judgment she deserves. Yes, change is coming. And we're the ones driving it. So is winter. God damn it. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I think that's enough seriousness for now. Among Us, but actually here's your opinion in the game. God damn it. <laughs> this evening calls for a celebratory drink. Fuck yeah. Professor. You're right. This is no time for gloomy faces. Should be celebrating Ryunosuke's not guilty verdict. Let's start having some fun. Hell yeah, Kazuma. In that case, might I suggest full of carnival? Oh shit, you're done again, dude. Who? <laughs> As the head waiter, I should be delighted to provide you with ample food and drink. Um, you're a detective, Hasunoga, aren't you? Dude, are oh. you good? Let's not worry about details for now. Are we gonna wash our hands after coughing? Fighting foes. You look carnival. Will you accompany us, Professor? Of course, La Carnival's food is second to none. I shall go and attend to the paperwork for Naruhara san's release. Oh yeah, thank you. And she poofs. Save the world, my final message. So, Giselle Brett won't be tried here. I suppose that means I'll never know. I'll never find out why she killed Dr. Wilson. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that's not accurate, right? Azuma. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ryanosuke? I just wanted to say thanks again. That's all. You really saved my skin today. Aww. <laughs> I didn't do a thing. You were the lawyer in there, weren't you? That defense was all your own work. Your skills made the difference, though. One day, I bet you'll be the best lawyer in the world. Mm, I'm not so sure about that. Hmm? Huh? To be honest, Something kept occurring to me over and over again during that trial. I couldn't help thinking that maybe you're the one destined to become a great lawyer, not me. No, Kazuma-sama! Oh, come on, be serious. If I helped you today, it was only right at the very start of the trial. You have a natural talent for it, for being a defense lawyer, I mean. Oh no, not me. All that tense verbal combat. I never want to go through that ever again. Bruh. I just... I did what you told me to do, that's all. Because I knew I could trust you. That's the point. Sorry? What do you mean, that's the point? Listen, Ryanosuke. Do you know what the most crucial weapon is that any lawyer needs in order to win? Um, knowledge of the law? To believe. You just gotta believe! Believe it! Sorry. To believe? To believe what? No, I'm a believer. A defense lawyer has to fight for his clients. Has to believe in them at all times. Like you believed in me when I said I didn't do it. I'm human, just like you. I don't have some superhuman ability to know the truth. You have to make a choice about what to believe in and stick to it when you're defending someone. Sometimes in the courtroom, you can really be backed into a corner. Being able to remain faithful to what you, cho you chose to believe in, even then. 
Oh, that's not something that anyone can do. It takes a special kind of person. I love this man. <laughs> Believing in your client. Let's look at today's trial. I'm a student lawyer with precious little real experience. But you never stopped believing in me. Well, I... Aww. You face these the hopeless situations time and time again. You never stopped looking for the truth. In the end, you found it. For your own efforts. And because you never stopped believing in me. Aww. Thanks, Kazuma. Something I want to ask you, actually, Ryanosuke. Oh, it's a favor, really. Something very important to me. It sounds serious. What is? Oh, you're still here, are you? Background music reminds me of Senban Zakura, because they're. It's both like um taking inspiration from like traditional Japanese music, so I think that's why it's got the similar vibe. Oh, Inspector Hasunoga. Bring some rickshaws for us. Let's go. Thank you. We'll be right there. Let's fucking go. Let's pick up this conversation again later. You should be celebrating right now. Your first court victory. In your study tour to Great Britain, don't forget. So my very first trial came to an end. Kazuma. Kazuma. Professor Mikotoba. Susato san, who acted as my assistant. Inspector Hasanoga, who didn't really play much of a part, but still. Bruh. Hey. It was because of the help and support of all these people that I managed to get through that trial. But more importantly, Kazuma hadn't yet managed to ask his favor of me. Little did I realize just how much it would be a change of my life. He did more than Sasato. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We are Sonic heroes. <laughs> oh, I got achievement. Yep. You have. I gotta save. I saved a game. Oh, episode two unlock. Oh shit, there. episode two unlock. Okay, there's five episodes. Okay. Yup. Yup. <laughs> my friends are my friends are my power. It does have that kind of vibe. <laughs> Do we want to start the second episode? I got nothing better to do. Are you so good at Keisha? I'm... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> or what do you mean? Um... You know, let's at least start it. Yeah, let's start it. Okay. All of these are Sherlock Holmes Ooh. titles? Oh, that's cool. Oh, hold on, okay? Hold on, I'll be right back. Oh, okay. 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 Mm. Does everybody like in the Phoenix? But the not Phoenix. The Nar Naruto san. The very Japanese one. Have hug. Oh, thank you, my dude. You has hug. Oh, thank you for so many hugs, my dude. Like, I like that. I like that emote a lot. Ooh, let's have some ice cream. We are best friends. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Um, okay, well. I guess in the meantime, I'll put up my BRB.